right? For the next talk, talk we will have uh, uh, acquisition of localization confidence for accurate object detection, and the presenter will be Jia Yuan Mao. Okay, thank you, chairs, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jia Yuan Mao, and today I'm going to present our work Acquisition of Localization Confidence for Accurate Object Detection. This is a joint work with Bo Rui, Rui Xuan, Peter, and Yuning. Object detection is one of the most fundamental tasks in computer vision. Most importantly, it is a prerequisite for a broad set of downstream tasks. Object de detection is composed of two parts. First, we need to generate bounding boxes for objects. Next, we need to classify the objects within each bounding box. To evaluate the localization of the detected bounding box, Usually, we compute the IOU of the ground truth bounding box showing yellow and the detected bounding box showing gray. The IOU is computed as the intersection of these two boxes over the union of these two boxes. Here, we focus on improving the localization of the detected objects. To begin with, we revisit the fast RCN pipeline for object detection. It begins with generating box proposals using a region proposal network. And then we assign class labels for each box. Next, we make the detected bounding box more accurate by an algorithm called bounding box regression. Finally, to remove the duplicate detections for the same object, we apply an algorithm called non-maximum subtraction. Here, the classification confidence naturally exists when we are doing classification. However, we may find that the localization confidence here is missing. We show that there are two drawbacks of the missing of the, class of the localization confidence. First, we show a misalignment between the classification and localization confidence and show how this can degrade the performance of the IMS procedure. Next, we show that the missing of the localization confidence makes the bounding box refinement less transparent. Now we look at the traditional non-maximum suppression algorithm. It begins with sorting all boxes in by their confi classification confidence in a descending order. If we find two boxes having a high IOU, say greater than 0 0.5, we suppress the one with lower classification confidence. The intuition behind this algorithm can be seen in the following example. Suppose we have a set of detected bounding box for the single object. We look at the classification confidence for the detections and only keep the box with the highest um, de look like, uh, classification confidence. So far, it looks good. However, if we look at the localization of the bounding boxes, we may find that this algorithm sometimes suppress better localized ones. We show the ground truth in the yellow, and we find that the green boxes, which are better localized than the red ones, actually have a lower classification confidence. To better demonstrate this misalignment, we plot this figure. On the x-axis, we show the classification confidence, oh, sorry, we show, the uh, we show the IOU with the ground truth of all detected bounding boxes. And on the y-axis, we show their classification confidence. We can see the misalignment between these two factors. We, we know that the Pearson correlation coefficient for this figure is only around 0.2. We argue that without the localization confidence due to the NMS procedure, accurate boxes may be suppressed by mistake. For the next part, let's look at the original bounding box regression problem. Say we have a, we have a um, bounding box proposal showing blue. We want to transform it to make it more accurate to become the green one. Here, we define a transformation function which takes some data as its parameter. To find the optimal data for the transformation, we usually treat this as a regression problem. Basically, we use a feed-forward network to directly find the optimal solution to the transformation parameter. Let's see an example here. Here, we show um, a proposal in blue, oh, sorry, in red, and we show the ground truth box in yellow. 
And we apply the bounding box regression for once, and we find that, OK, the localization is getting better. However, it seems that one iteration of bounding box regression is not enough to best localize this uh, object. Actually, usually, the transformed bounding box can be fed into the network again and get transformed again. This widely used technique is called iterative bounding box regression. Let's try it. We find that if we apply this um, iterative bounding box regression again, we find the localization is actually getting worse. One more time, we find that actually it gets stuck at some suboptima. The overall AP on the MS Coco dataset is consistent with our finding. We can see that so for the four, for the first two iterations of the bounding box regression, we find an improvement on the overall AP. However, starting from the third iteration, we find that the overall AP is beginning to drop. This is consistent with the finding in the paper Cascade RCN by Tsai and his colleague. In this case, the bounding box regression is actually a black box optimizer for the localization. We have no idea about how confident the model is about this transformation. We even don't know how many iterations we need for the localization. Here, we argue that without, um, without uh, localization confidence, um, the bounding box refinement task is get less interpretable and less controllable. Now it's time to propose our solution for the acquisition of localization confidence. Starting from the original fast RCM pipeline, we add one more branch along with the original classification branch and the bounding box regression branch, which to predict the IOU, or more precisely, we predict the IOU for each bounding box with its best matched ground truth. Now, our network has acquired the localization confidence. Let's see how this can help. First, we improved the NMS procedure by disentangling classification and localization. On the right, we can see the predicted um, localization confidence is quite aligned with the IOU with the ground truth. The intuition of the, our MS is like this. So for multiple detections of the same object, first we look at the localization confidence and we only keep the box which is best localized. Next, we look again at the classification confidence column and we choose the most confident class label for this box. This algorithm we call it IOU guided MS. It begins with sorting all boxes by their localization confidence in descending order. If we find two boxes having a high IOU, we suppress the one with lower localization confidence instead of the classification confidence in the case of the traditional MS. And here we need to update the classification confidence for the remaining box. Here comes the result. We compare our result on the MS Coco dataset with um, the traditional MS and a softer MS alternative. More importantly, when we look at the MAP metrics with high IOU threshold, essentially we impose a stronger requirement for the localization confidence. We show a greater gap with other, me with other methods. Most importantly, we find that our algorithm can be applied to multiple frameworks, not only FPN. We have tried this on top of the Cascade RCN and Mask RCN, which are both state-of-the-art object detectors. And we have um, consistent improvement on the overall AP as well as the AP metrics with high IOU threshold. Next part, we show how we can improve the bounding box refinement by the technique we call it IOU optimization. Here, we propose an optimization-based view for bounding box refinement. Our goal is to find some optimal parameter C star, which maximizes some criterion, for example, the IOU, between the transformed on detection result and the ground truth. Previously, we solved this via a regression, via a regressor, but now we can directly optimize this. Let's see how it happened. Begin with the current detection results, we estimate the IOU with the ground truth. Here, we utilize the back propagation of the network to get the derivative of the IOU with respect to the coordinates. Here, 
we can simply update or transform the box using the gradient ascent algorithm. Note that since we have a learner here, we can do this uh, in an iterative way and achieve iterative refinement. Note that here, the predict IOU is a fully transparent indicator of the localization, and we can use this um, for, for example, you can do, uh, you can choose the algorithm you want to optimize, um, you can choose um, uh, to use this um, criterion as our early stopping uh, condition, yeah. Um, one more thing to notice is that to better compute the gradient with respect to the coordinates, we introduce a new RY pooling method, which we call it precise RY pooling. It avoids any sampling or any quantization during the pooling, so it provides continuous gradient with respect to the box coordinates. We have open sourced this implementation at the following Git repo. Let's see some qualitative results. So on the left, we show the result for the bounding box regression. We find that it sometimes gets stuck at some suboptima. However, our bounding box optimization consistently finds the best localized one. Here comes the quantitative result. We compare our method with the original bounding box regression on using the FPN on the MS Coco dataset. And also, if we look at the MAP with high IOU threshold, we can see a larger gap. Also, th this algorithm is not restricted to only FPN. Actually, we can apply it on top of, for example, Cascade RCN or Mask RCN and achieve state-of-art performance. Know that the IOU prediction is just one more branch added to the RCM, um, RCM framework, so it can be jointly optimized with almost any faster than RCM based uh, detection pipeline. Taking the FPN as an example, starting from this baseline, adding the joint training and the IOU guided MS, we improved over AP by 1.5, and also bringing everything together we find our algorithm reach a comparable result with all state-of-the-art object detectors. Finally, the take-home messages. Um, in this paper, we discuss the missing of localization confidence in object detection. We propose the idea of learning to predict IOU, which make the network acquire the localization confidence. The acquired localization confidence helps us to disentangle the classification and localization. Moreover, it provides an interpretable and optimizable objective for localization. From an algorithmic point of view, we propose an optimization-based solution to the bounding box regression problem, which is pro previously solved by regression. We hope all these ideas and insights can benefit um, the community. Welcome to our post session for more technical details and discussion, and thank you all for your attention. Right, we have time for a couple of questions. Question here. Um, what is the advantage of learning the uh, intersection of a union score function and optimizing it, rather than uh, learning the steps of the algorithms that should improve the intersection of a union score? I think that methods, this kind of methods have been proposed previously. Yeah, good question, thank you. Um, so we have, we have shown in the previous slides that, so if you directly use a regression-based algorithm, say, to try, try to find the transformation parameter, and it, it suffers from, um, sometimes it degrades the localization result. This has been well studied in previous work, mostly because of the mismatch of the distribution of your input during the training and the inference. But we find that, so empirically we found that, and you can see more in our paper, we empirically find that our method is more robust to the change of the distribution. Once this network gets trained, it can apply it to multiple frameworks like the Cascade RCN or Mask RCN or even FPN and whatever it is. We have time for one more question. Okay, if, if there's no more questions from the audience, then I'll ask one. 
Um, so in your description of the precise ROI pool operation, yep. uh, you mentioned that you replaced the sampling of points with an integral. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the actual implementation, this must still be a finite sum. So can you describe the actual implementation-wise difference between precise ROI pool and ROI line? Yes, sure. So, so remember that in our line, we actually sample four points within each bin for, uh, and, and average them or taking the max of them um, to get the actual value of that. And in our, in our implementation, we take the full integral of the, of, 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 say, we take the integral of all discrete points within that bin. So um, um, intuitively, this, uh, this can be better if we have a very large bins because uh, the, the sampling will, um, will degenerate the, uh, the results. And another important reason is that since we want to use the predict IOU as an optimization objective, we need some um, good property for the gradients. So our pooling provides, um, our, our, sorry, our line can provide gradient with respect to the box coordinates, but the gradient itself is not continuous because of your sampling. Instead, our, our uh, precise ROI pooling provides continuous gradient with respect to the coordinates. All right, let's thank the speaker again.